Good evening and welcome to Cliffyland's Global Cooking Challenge. Tonight is night two of cooking the food of South Africa. And tonight we're breaking all the rules. And we will be making, um, believe it or not, a crawfish and cream cheese pasta. So go figure. Again, uh, this is night two of three of cooking the food of South Africa. Uh, and obviously South Africa is right there. That's our flag right on it. Uh, tonight's dish comes from the western coast of South Africa. And um, let's get going because this should be uh, interesting and maybe quick. Who knows? There's a fat head. Uh, hey, Kenneth, thank you for the restream. Hey, Savella, see you there. Thanks for coming by. Oh, I got the right side on that for once. Okay, hopefully I won't be dropping this anywhere. We've got a host of South African music going here. So, like I said, breaking all the rules. Uh, this is the second time I've seen something, not, not, I mean, from any country, that, uh, breaks what I thought was a cardinal rule of uh, not ever mixing um, seafood and cheese. But the husband says, hey, there's a lobster mac and cheese, so um, that uh, can't be too far off. Uh, thank you for the like and the restream, Laura. Good seeing you. Thanks for coming by. And again, I'm trying to not blind everyone uh, with the light there. Okay, so step one. Now, um, this comes from a South African website. It talks about it being from the west coast of South Africa, and that's pretty much all the information I found about this specific dish. We can get into more of my whole drama on that later. Uh, but the step one on this is going to be spaghetti. Um, so I have some whole wheat spaghetti that I've had sitting around from back when I cooked Malta. Uh, if you want to look at the blog, everything, by the way, is at cliffyland.com. You can find uh, all 159 other countries that we've cooked so far, um, including the ones that predate um, Meerkat here by a lot. Um, so, uh, golly gee, uh, I guess I'm making that much. So, uh, going to get this going. And it's weird, I don't really make spaghetti. Uh... I mean, it's probably like, before I started cooking, one of the few things that I actually, like, ever did make uh, wasn't something I do quite often. And I always feel like I always pick the wrong size pot. I'm hoping this one does it. Uh, first time on my new Apple TV. Hey! Congratulations, Kenneth! Huzzah! So you're airplaying it, I'm assuming, because I would have heard if there was an app. We want an app on the Apple TV. Okay. Here. Let me move you over just while I do this basic part. Uh, keep me company over here. Dooka dooka doo. Yeah, yes, I got my Apple TV now too. It's, it's doing fine. But I did spend like the first you know, the like whole day installing apps and uh, and uh, authorizing each damn thing I could find. So, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, pot of spaghetti here, uh, again, you know, there's a uh, couple things I know. One is to salt the water. Don't be like Olive Garden. Salt your water when you do your pasta. Um... I'm going to add a little olive oil to the water, too. Um, because something tells me that might help things from sticking together. I could be wrong. But we will see. Uh, we're going to need you later. Uh, so... I, this is, I did open this before, obviously. This is like half the box, so I'm hoping that's the right amount. We're going to have leftovers. By the way, um, what we cooked on um, Friday, the Boboti, uh, which is now on YouTube if you'd like to see it, um, came out really, really well. Um, I just had some leftovers last night 
and the rice, the yellow rice, was absolutely phenomenal. So those are both really great. So, uh, and look for everything on the blog on Wednesday, uh, which will cover uh, Friday night, um, and tonight, and then next Tuesday. Always at Alva. Thank you, Kenneth. I know I could count on you. Um, so, uh, hopefully, that's going to boil, and I won't miss it. Uh, just to be on the safe side. The wooden spoon trick to keep the bubbling from bubbling over. Uh, so, uh, I feel really dumb that I don't, like, you know, know off the top of my head how long this stuff takes. Uh, because normally I just don't do that. Um, seven to nine minutes after it boils. Uh-huh, got it. Do not overcook, exclamation point. Okay, so... That's, that's the advice. Um, okay, so uh, next I need to I need to do prep work on the other stuff. So uh, I need to mind this behind me. So yell at me if you see something happening. You know, on, on Friday someone was saying that there was, oh, there's a spider on the wall behind you. And it's all a big gag. Go figure. Okay. So, uh, we're gonna peel and chop an onion, and uh, you know, the basic stuff right here. Uh, and I need bowls for all of the above. I already sli um, sharpened my, my knife earlier. So, uh, I was looking for recipes from South Africa, and I already did the boboti on Friday, which like I said, was super, super great. Um, and uh, if you missed it, like I said, check it out on the blog and such. Uh, but, you know, of all the South African dishes, it's kind of like the only only thing that I'm finding, like, across the board of, yes, this is a South African dish. And South Africa having such a complicated history from so many peoples and cultures, it's really, really tricky. And I want to find something that's, you know, of the black African population. And that's a lot harder than it sounds. Because, um... There's uh, sausage that's, uh, you know, like their version of brats and such, which is like recoiled and such, but I'm not making my own sausage. And, um, and uh, then there's like a beef jerky type thing they have, um, which isn't going to fly for me either because, you know, I'm not going to sit here and dry meat. Um, that would be as exciting as watching a meat dry. Uh, something. You should have put the pasta in boiling water. Yeah. Oopsie doopsie. You're using that small pan for the pasta? Okay, that's not big enough. No. Okay. Uh, already. Good. Um, now I need to go and fix that. Arr. Okay. Reload. En caboy a vuelve tire. Okay, I chopped the pasta. I don't have like a something in between these sizes. What's in my mind? Okay, we will fix this. We started early. It cooks fast. We can do better. Okay, hold on. We can do this. We can do this. Yes, we can. Okay, starting over. This is all wheat too, by the way. Um, that's not normally what would be there, but uh, that's what I have. Oh yeah, you boil the water first. No, I'm not used to doing this. You're used to doing this. I know it's like the most basic thing in the universe. But it's not something that, you know, I do on the regular. So, again, even at the most, even three years into this, the most basic things, and I'm like, Ooh. Okay, boiling water first. 
Thank you. We will do it. We can do this. Okay, thank you. And continuing with the chopping. So, uh, meanwhile, I was trying to find recipes. And it was not easy. Because I'm finding things that are um, involving... Mm, awful, shall we say. You know, various, uh, like, um, lamb, sheep lungs, and there's uh, snacks made out of um, chicken heads and feet. And I'm thinking, no. I mean, even if I were wanting to do that, I don't think I'd easily find those ingredients. And there's a number of things, a so lamb liver, I'm think sheep liver, and I'm thinking, where would I find sheep liver? Um... I mean, even the, the butcher, butcher, probably didn't have that, so. Uh, and there was something that I really, uh, oh, golly gee, who's that? Junior, hey, Junior, thank you. I love the flags, I bet I could, they're so tiny. Let's see, Netherlands, India, uh, Libya. Oh, my eyes are really bad, is that Spain? It's very tiny. Uh, uh, maybe Finland, Japan, and Latvia, I'm thinking. Hard to see. Uh, one of the stands. Kyrgyzstan? That's so tiny. I see Jordan in there. Oh my god. UN maybe? Oh my goodness. Chicken heads can be found on Hollywood Boulevard on most Friday nights. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, there's something that, that they make that I thought would have been really, really fun to make. Uh, but, uh, that's called, m m uh, monkey gland sauce. Uh, the best part about it is that it, uh, neither involves monkeys nor glands. Hey, Danny. It's, uh, basically a barbecue sauce. Um, that does not involve monkeys or glands. Uh, but it's a sauce you put on grilled meats. Um, and there's all these kebab type things, but I have all these issues with, um, uh, grilling, uh, because kind of, I hate doing it, and we're out of propane, and it's outdoors, and anytime I decide I'm gonna grill, it insists on raining. It's the perfect way I can make it rain here. You can find anything in Chinatown. Lols. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, Ken. Uh, yeah, I missed, I'm hearing something bubbling behind me. Yeah, my fingers aren't working. That's what happens when I work with my thumbs. Ken, thank you. Um, so, uh, anyway, monkey gland sauce. It's a, yeah, it's it's basically a barbecue sauce. Um, I wanted, that would have been lovely to make. It'd be really easy. It wouldn't, I mean, other than the name, there didn't seem to be anything that was, you know, particularly spectacular about it. Um, but the name alone is a, is a good selling point. Um... But then the other sort of African, African stuff uh, is so similar to things that I made for like every other neighboring nation. So there's like um, spinach with peanuts and, you know, pap, which is sort of like a porridge. Um, I'll be right over there with that water. Uh, so um, I feel kind of stuck on that front, and that kind of bothers me, because I wanted to do something, you know, for all parts of South Africa. Um, and I'm having trouble with that. Um, adding on to the fact that uh, the nations that are sort of, you know, almost entirely or almost entirely within the borders of South Africa, Lesotho already did, and Swaziland will be coming up in the new year. Um, so... It's going to be tricky, because I try not to do things that I've already done. Um, so, as, as an explanation, funky connection tonight. Um, try quitting it and uh, force quitting it and starting again. Um, that tends to work for me when that happens. Because um, sometimes I feel that oh, I have a bad connection, I'm watching somebody and no one else seems to have the problem. Um, so I need to go check on my boiling water. But thank you for coming by, Kenneth. I always appreciate your help. Um, even when I do something dumb and embarrassing, like not knowing how to boil spaghetti. Um, and I know with the whole wheat, it's, it's different and it cooks faster. So, uh, what are you fixing? I am making, um, a crayfish and cream cheese pasta. And the crayfish is, 
well, technically it is crayfish. Um, uh, it's Florida lobster tail that we're using. Um, but Florida lobster, for those in the know, are not actually lobster. Um, they are crayfish. We just call them Florida lobster. Um, as opposed to Maine lobster, which are actually lobster. Um, so we're, it said you can, uh, the recipe served a number, you know, like double the people that we're making it for. So um, it looks like it serves four to six people and we're only serving two. So um, in, it said you could get, uh, was it two lobsters or six lobster tails? So I got three lobster tails. So I'm just trying to more or less cut everything in half. Love your streams. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate that. Lola, is it? Thank you. Um, and chopping the onion, as always. Uh, but it's it's been tricky finding South African stuff. And I have, you know, two friends that um, either were born in South Africa or lived there for a time, and I wrote to both of them, and neither one wrote back. Sad. But like I said, the only thing I found that was like, yes, this is a South African dish is the boboti. And I did it with the yellow rice, which is sort of like the other thing that came up. So, um, I feel a little stuck. Oh, but what I'm making on uh, Tuesday, though, sounds good. Thank you, thank you. Um, what I'm making Tuesday is something that uh, you only, uh, well, in the way it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you what it is yet, but in the manner in which it is made and presented and served, it is uniquely South African. What's in it is not. But that has a, a lot to do with South Africa's history. But that's your tease for Tuesday, to get you to come back on Tuesday. Um, so we have our chopped onion. And let me see if that water is boiling. Uh, sort of, kind of. Alrighty. So, uh, garlic, um, this is something. Uh, they have wonderful sausage and sausage. Yes, that's what I gather. And, uh, and I found recipes for the sausage, and I was like, well, that would be cool, but, you know, I don't have, I mean, I could get the casings, but I don't have the machinery, and I have zero experience doing it. So, I don't know if I'm ready to have everyone watch me go, what the hell do I do? Just trying to shove something into a casing by hand. Uh, what am I looking for? Garlic, okay. Um... I'm gonna need garlic times two because this is being served, it says to be served it with garlic bread. Um, so I'm using my husband's manner of, um, you know, making garlic bread uh, to throw that on the side in the middle of all this. Uh, thank you, Ken, uh, for the uh, restream there. Oh, Lydia, by the way, I didn't see you there. Hey there, hi there, there. thank you for coming by. Um, Two. Okay, the two cloves of garlic on one end and two cloves of garlic on the other end. Again, if I'm dizzy, I, today I ran 11 miles. Whew. Just now. So I'm still a little dehydrated. So if I'm a little more loopy than usual, now you know why. Okay. Uh, water is boiling. Okay, here goes nothing. Fat lot or nothing. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Set timer for nine minutes. Okie dokie. Meanwhile, do you have a KitchenAid mixer? Uh, Cliffy, do you live near Tiger Woods? Uh, actually, yes. Um, Tiger Woods lives, um, uh, his office as offices and his new restaurant are walking distance from where I'm standing right now. And uh, his house, well, this, you know, big old mansion thing, is on Jupiter Island, which uh, I jog long distances. I could jog to it if I wanted to, but technically that's in the next county, which is just up the road a ways. Um, but that is like super duper exclusivo, as you would imagine. Um, KitchenAid, uh, no, I have a, a, I have a Cuisinart, um, in case you're wondering. Uh, nice. Uh, I need to start running again. Haha, I've been so busy. Well, yeah, it takes time. Uh, there's no lie there. It takes a lot of time. Um, me too. I've been running for years. Good. 
Um, I don't, I, I, the friends, friends I tend to find here tend to be cyclists and they don't, uh, they don't run. So I'm like, good for you, but you know, that's different conversations we're having. But uh, thankfully today was like the first overcast day that like did not involve thunderstorms. But uh, let me tell you, we find some weird stuff on the roads. Be right back. Sure. Um, the uh, I ran on Thursday. No, Thursday. Yes, Thursday. And uh, between Thursday and today, I ran twice. And um, and in no particular order, I almost tripped over a large black snake. Um, a possum, no, not a possum, a raccoon, um, a frog, and a naked baby. So, uh, one of those things someone should have had control over. Uh, but it's just the, uh, the odd experiences of running in Florida, uh, along the beach. Okay, one of these two is going to get graded, and one of these two, two of these... Two will be great and two will be minced. Uh, so I'm going to start with the mincing over here. Stand up straight. Mom could be watching. <laughs> no, she might be. I don't see her now. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so we've been finding myself debating what to do at the end of all this, aside from going on vacation. Um, I was with my cousin yesterday and uh, I was saying, you know, if they can all come from Puerto Rico, they can, you know, let's all stay up in a hotel and we'll do like a big old Puerto Rican feast, you know, since Puerto Rico isn't a UN country. Um, we'll just uh, do that and that'll be the big, you know, send off for, you know, phase one. Ah, interesting mix. Sounds like a country song. Yeah, this is from a album called Sounds of South Africa. A ritual Before the Hunt, African Tour Orchestra. Yeah, that's what it says. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe we do like a Puerto Rican thing. Uh, they're saying, oh, you know, get a, a roast pig and, you know, do a slow Puerto Rican lechon. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I can give it a shot. I mean, when I, when I, when I screwed up Cuba uh, back in the letter C when I was very, very early into this, um, I had a great recipe, but I just kind of ran out of time. And, I, and trying to make a roast pork for two people was not a good idea. I wish I could read that. Thank you very much. If someone can translate, that would be lovely. Thank you for uh, your comment. Um, and uh, so, uh, bubbling, and I've got my timer. Timer going. Five minutes to go. Uh, it, this didn't, you know, the only reason I'm doing whole wheat pasta is because that's what I have. It just said get spaghetti. I'm sure normally it would be, you know, not whole wheat pasta, but you know, we'll live. Um, like I said, today seems to be like breaking the rules because, you know, one thing that I thought was don't ever mix seafood and cheese. And that's kind of what happened. I meant all the things you tripped over could be a country song. Oh, that too, yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Okay, so now we're gonna grate these two garlic cloves. I need to get a microplane. Like this, this is good, but and a microplane would be better. Uh, okay, this is gonna be for the gar uh, the um, garlic bread, which we're gonna throw together um, somewhere in between one thing and another. Uh, hey, yeah, yes, hey, but. Uh, I got to go. I had to use a friend. Not a problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, you know, feel free to follow on Twitter at Clippyland, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Facebook. Uh, now on YouTube, you can subscribe on YouTube. i um, looking to get more subscribers there. Uh, our Somali entry, for some reason, there has gotten a certain amount of attention, which I'm kind of surprised, pleasantly. Um, so uh, check that out. The blogs are always posted every Wednesday at cliffyland.com and you can see any countries that you missed, the ones that predated Meerkat. Um, now they have uh, information about the countries, links to the original recipes, pictures, 
uh, reviews of how everything went, uh, trivia about the countries, and now links to these videos right here. So, my fingers are all nice and garlicky now, and I have three minutes to go. Okay. So, this is the uh, grated garlic for the bread, and that's going to sit over there. I need to wash my hands. Hey, Kenneth, I know you're a world traveler, um, uh, but uh, and you, does Wyoming have an accent? Do people in Wyoming have a specific Wyoming accent? I'm just curious. Because I see all the accent stuff, I see like, you know, big swaths of the mountain states are all kind of one accent. Um, random thought. Okay, so uh, parsley. Uh, chopping a random amount of parsley. Which means that I have to wash the parsley. By the way, I have leftover stuff from before. I need to figure out what to do with leftover radishes. Uh, when you finish the series, uh, there is a regional food dog in the U.S. Uh, there is the regional food dog in the U.S. Oh, oops. Um, uh, uh, I forgot to wash this. I washed those. I'll be right back. Uh, I, I don't know, um, I've, I've kind of wondered about the U.S. stuff, but I just can't seem to get excited about U.S. food. Um, I mean, regional American food, like state by state, which is normally what I would do, foods of the U.S. Um, I mean, my, my OCD instinct would be like, hey, you know, do all the states alphabetical order, which, you know, I, who knows, I might, I could, in some fashion. Um, I just can't find myself getting horribly excited by that, by that prospect. Um, uh, but who knows, maybe, you know, talk to me after I cook the United States in, um, sometime next spring, and then we'll see how that goes. I already have in mind, you know, the stuff I'm gonna be making, but, you know, it's just really weird, like, I'm cooking the food of, food of the U.S. tonight. It's like, yeah? So... We'll figure it out. We have um, actually one of our friends um, who uh, follows our blog and is right here, uh, wanted to do sort of like a, a ice creams of the world. Uh, but uh, it's kind of tricky deciding, figuring out what, you know, what differentiates one country from another and then doing that in the form of ice cream. Uh, but instead they did, um, they did uh, uh, meals and desserts from every state and then for their honeymoon, they've just come back from going around the country. I mean, literally. They spent two months going to just about every city and it, uh, their Instagram was outrageous. Okay. So we're draining the pasta now. Oh, did I didn't even take a picture of that, damn it. Um, hold that thought. Okay. There you go. Alrighty, uh, draining the pasta. Okay, you sit there. Meanwhile, uh, Avaho21, thank you for the like and the restream. But anyway, their Instagram was incredible. They went to just the coolest, coolest places. And how long were they gone? Like two months, three months? Uh, our friends who went around the country. Oh, uh, month and a half. Month and a half. It was, oh my God, I was so jealous. But I want to do that road trip, the this of the map, where um, if you want to spend a whole year in 70 degree weather, and they said you can start, you know, and they told you what days to be in what cities. Starting Corpus Christi and you're working your way through the Midwest and then spending part of the summer in Colorado and then going up to Alaska for August and then winding back down in San Diego on December 31st. And I was thinking, that is my road trip. That's what I also want to do. Okay, so this is just a random amount of parsley that's going to go in here. Um, 
which is still not chopped right. I need to get that, okay, what's it called again? Demi, Luna, Luna, Demi, Mezzaluna, Mezzaluna, for chopping this stuff. Somebody something, I missed it. Uh, in Florida, you could do conch chowder. Yes, um, could do that. Uh, see, that's one thing. It's like right off the bat, I'm like Florida. Mm, I'm in Florida. Florida is big and complex. You know, Florida you could do a Cuban sandwich. Florida you could do, you know, um, you know, crawfish pie. Florida you could do alligator stew. You could do conch chowder. You know, the na what I call the national food of my neighborhood, of my town is a grilled mahi-mahi sandwich. Like every restaurant that's not an Italian restaurant has grilled mahi-mahi sandwich and conch fritters. Uh, parsley, okay. So, um, uh, quickly, uh, wow, only one more thing, that's crazy. This recipe is too simple. I hope I don't screw it up. Uh, only last thing is to quarter a lemon. Uh, which I have a lemon. Of many lemons. Wyoming chuck wagon cookery. That would be cool. Lots of beans. That came up on Somalia. The, um, I mentioned this when I cooked last week. Um, that uh, there was some kind of a poll of some sort, and they asked people, like, what would you consider, you know, what's the national dish? What's the thing that you most often serve? Uh, of Somali dishes and the answer was this one dish which I didn't do which is basically all beans and there were and uh, the pollsters were like that's really odd considering you know the side effects but uh, I did not serve that to company for the same reason okay so yeah I know I didn't clean the parsley off the uh, off the knife alas I'll be okay. Yeah, okay, good. So uh, that's ready for the dressing and, you know, abracadabra. Let me wash this off and then we're ready to go over there. This is very fast. So fast, I'm kind of worried. Be right back. Moment for hygiene. When are you cooking the, uh, the lobster? Uh, right now. Okay, so now I've got that cleaned off. Hi there, welcome back. Hey, Kathy, Hector, thank you for the like, thank you for the restream. Kathy, Kathy, hey. Okay, <coughs> time to go. We're gonna move. Come this way. Okay, so I, I, I have a preference for this burner. My great grandmother was a chuck wagon cook 110 years ago on Buffalo Bill's TE Ranch. Oh, so you have uh, ties to to where you are as well, I would imagine. Um, that is very cool. Did they call her Cookie? I thought every cook on the dude ranch is called Cookie. Um, alrighty. <coughs> saucepan. Lid for saucepan. Okay, uh, we're going with olive oil, I think. I'm pretty, pretty sure, yes, olive oil. So I'm going with uh, about uh, two tablespoons worth either. I'm a community pick today, I'm so excited. I don't think I've ever been to community pick before. Two tablespoons. By the way, did y'all see um, on Friday, I was featured, the Meerkat people featured me. I was so excited. Um, they did a whole little interview and column on Medium. Um, go to cliffyland.com and check out my, uh, the link is there. It was just very nice of them. Uh, ranchers since 1870s in Wyoming. Golly gee. What's the name of uh, the, the, the um, empty mansions? The family? Forget, uh, Clark, was it? I think so, yeah. Yes. Um, I was reading that book, Empty Mansions, um, which I highly recommend, even though it's insanely long. Um, that starts off about what's his name, Mr. Clark from the 1800s who, uh, you know, was in Montana, and he wound up 
you know, owning everything, being one of the richest people, and then becoming, yes, it is California olive oil. You've noticed that before. You've, quick eye. I, I don't know which is the best, but this struck me as nice, and I like the packaging. So, so heating this up, and then I'm going to get our uh, onions and garlic going, and let me get out my lobster tails, too, because it's almost time for that. <coughs> Onions and the minced garlic and the uh, lobster tails, you see. But yes, Cla God, what was his name? But anyway, um, he owned everything. He was like one of the richest people. And then his family and then his daughter. And his daughter lived until like 2008 or something. She was like a hundred and something when she died. Um, but they had all these mansions that she didn't go back to and they just were sitting there. It's a very good book, but it's about, you know, the Westerns and the, and then it moves all the way till now. Empty mansions. Good book. Okay. This is heating up. Okay. I think it's time to take pictures and do the usual routine. Here we go. Onions. Oil. Go. Did not sizzle. Something. Uh, I use the same one for frying. Prefer Greek olive oil for everything else. Hmm, interesting. Greek. Just generically Greek or a specific brand? Uh, okay, onions in. This should have been warmer. I don't know why it took so long. I have it at like sort of medium high, incidentally. Um, might as well add the garlic in now, too. Garlic. Seems like everything starts the same way. I mean, about six months into the challenge, I said every single country, every recipe starts with saute the onions and perhaps the garlic. So every country has a picture of me dropping onions into oil. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so while that goes, uh, let me make sure I have... Now, here's the weird part about the volume of seafood stock that I'm going to be using to cover this all. Yes, I do have enough. Um, it says two cups. I hope two cups is right. Well, the two cups would be for the whole amount, and I'm only using half. So, but I can't imagine that one cup would cover enough to boil the lobster. I assume that has to be covered in, in the liquid. So I'm gonna go with two cups and hopefully that will be right. Um, we'll figure it out. So this recipe was super, super vague. It was from a, a New Zealand, a New Zealand, um, the, the, the suffix on South African website is ZA which always throws me off when I see that. Um, but no, from a South African website, which I think is called like News24 or something like that. Um, but I didn't say anything about recipe, I mean reviews of this, so I hope it's good. Okay. So everybody have a good weekend. Hey, Tim, Tim Bartender, how you doing? Good seeing you again, thanks for coming by. Tim, Tim, Tim. Uh, Tim, I assume you are a bartender, from your name. Look what I got. This is a bar guide from the 60s. My dad had this on his on his bar when I was growing up and I knew how to mix all the drinks. You like, you take the name of the drink and then you spin the wheel and it gives you the recipe in the little window. So I was like little Sally Draper on Mad Men. I knew how to mix, you know, like a shamrock and a sidecar and bee's knees just from this and then I went and forgot everything and I told my husband that I was I saw this on some TV show and I said oh we had that and he went and found one on eBay but I still have never had a zombie or a Zacharac or Zazarac would you know how to make a Zazarac? would anyone know how to make a Zazarac? In case, I bet you're wondering what's in a Zazarac a Zazarac is one third rye, one quarter sugar syrup, one quarter anisette, one quarter light rum, one sixth per nod, 
one dash each Angostura and orange bitters, shake with ice and strain. So that would be a Zazarek. I knew you were all wondering. You were very desperate to know that. Okay, I think the time has come uh, to add the lobster tails. Here, fishy, fishy. Um, thing about being here is like that you can get lobster lobster tails most places, but they're expensive. We, although the grocery store has them for not that much, which is usually on sale. So, one, two, three. Ak -ak -ak -ak. No, the other way, baby. Clip, <coughs> clip on your body. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Nah. Why do you insist on going the other way? Okay. Uh, picture. And we're gonna add the two cups of seafood stock. Don't cook too fast. Wait for me. Wait for me. Okay, I'm gonna get the whole thing. Okay. Picture. Again, I need three hands. See, that doesn't cover it. Does it need to be covered? I thought it needed to be covered. Because it's going to have to reduce later. So I don't want to start too high. I'm hoping that's okay. Because I couldn't have used a smaller saucepan. Because that's then it would have been too small. So we're going to find out. You tell me if I need more. That's why I have you here for. Okay. Uh, lid. So bring this to a boil. The Greeks have been producing olive oil for 5,000 years. Indeed they have. Um, so I'm going to bring this to a boil. And then I'm going to cover it. So. How high do I want that? It's not covered. Which worries me. <coughs> Still waiting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put this sort of like a medium and cover it. Uh, I think the lid goes slightly off. Is that right? Yep, lid goes on. Okay. So, you let me know. We're gonna find out. You suckers are waiting, waiting for them to turn red. So meanwhile, I'm gonna try to do um, the basic uh, garlic bread. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'll put that in here. Uh, okay, I'm using. I have to have sourdough. So we tend to use fresh baked sourdough from the uh, from the bakery. Uh, but oh, Tuesday is going to be interesting. Just, just giving you a fair warning. So I have my two pieces of an interesting sourdough here. Five grain sourdough made from scratch here daily. So uh, putting butter on the bread. I'm going to turn on the broiler. Uh, I don't have a toaster oven. A toaster oven would be handy, but I don't have a toaster oven. Uh, butter, butter, butter. Butter on bread while we wait for the boiling on the lobster. Hey, lady! My favorite is from the island of Santonini. Sent, 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 Good. Uh, okay. Look how exciting putting butter on bread. Where else do you get to see that? This is just to have on the side. And thankfully I have the time to do it right now. See, now the bottom is turning red. I don't know. I'm worried. Should I flip it? I think I should flip it. I'm gonna flip it. 
can use my tongs, my tongue to tongue, tongue, tongs, and flip it. They look almost ready. I'm surprised that would happen that quickly. Uh, so we're putting the garlic, um, the minced garlic on the bread. Can you see that? You can't see that. Okay. Garlic over here. And throwing on the sea salt. Sorry, Miss Bell, it's the Santonese. Santo. Santo. Santoni. Santoni, okay. I, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, okay. Sea salt on the bread. And uh, the husband suggested some paprika, so paprika it shall be. We have hot paprika because we like the hot. Um, I bought this when I, back when I cooked, I think it was Hungary. Um, I mean, Hungary is a logical place. I don't know if maybe I got it before. So, paprika ready to go. That looks like it's ready. What do you think? Can you tell? Look at that. That looks red. Well, I guess I could taste it, couldn't I? Something, something. San Santonini's ancient location in the city of Atlantis. Okay, then. I thought that was NASA on the Bahamas. Joking. Okay. Uh, I know, is it ready? Hard to tell. It's very red. It's curled up. I think it's ready. I think it's ready. So, um, I'm gonna take out the baking tray for garlic bread. Throw that on there. I'm gonna have to watch it carefully. Uh, Carrie, hey there, thanks for liking the restream. Um, let's take out our lobster. Since I think that's ready, I sure hope it is. Um, I mean, it's red. So we've got our three lobster tails there. And this is gonna get strained. But meanwhile, I have to address my garlic bread. And I need to watch it because it will burn. So oven light is on. Yell at me if you don't see me looking at it. Okay. Meanwhile, this is going to get strained um, in, uh, I'll use a different colander. The premise here is I'm going to strain out the uh, stuff. That's the technical term for it, stuff. The onions and garlic. And uh, so I'll just have the stock back. And the way it was worded in the recipe was very confusing to someone like moi. Some onions stuck to the bottom. Okay. This is gonna sizzle. Just like that. Okay. So now we have our seafood stock out. It's gonna go back in the pot. I'll turn you around in a second. I only have, only have two hands. The olive oil Santanini is stored in barrels made from wood cured from seawater and it tastes like butter. That sounds delicious. There's an olive oil specific selling place that's not too far from here. Weird thing about it though, Not in any kind of place that has any kind of traffic. 
you know, like walk through traffic. So you have to make a special trip to the strip mall to buy your olive oil, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, what am I doing here? Okay, now that I have this going, um, I need to add the cream cheese to the stock here. And again, I wasn't sure uh, how much because I'm using half, but then that's the two cups. I think I'm gonna use the whole thing. I think I'm gonna use the whole thing. The whole stick of cream cheese. Um, I did not take pictures, did I? That was a bad thing. Okay, you are there, and then you are here, and then we're going to use the whole stick of cream cheese. Uh, besides, the Greeks need the money. Mm, yes, uh, yes they do. Uh, and uh, it says, open a long center seam at end. Again, things that I don't normally do. At end. A long, this is the center seam. This is the center seam. Do I pull it? Or do I, how do I open this? Ow. It says a long center seam. Yeah. So, I mean, do I pull it apart like that? Completely pull this apart. I don't normally do this. Here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use the whole thing after all, since I used the two cups. Uh, uh, so cream cheese, here you go. Phil Philadelphia. Uh, I'll have time to do that in a second, so if you need to do something else. Okay. Because this has got to go in there. Okay. Uh, how is the bread? Uh, thank you for asking. It is ready. Thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Say, what would I do without you people? Okay. Again, my mitts. Mm-hmm. Bread. Okay. So since you came out of there, you're going back. Hopefully it'll stay warm. Uh, cool off there. Okay. Thank you. Meanwhile, over here, uh, I am trying to dissolve this cheese, uh, this cream cheese in this uh, seafood stock, which will happen in moments as soon as I chop it up and I take a picture. Okay. This sounds like a really weird idea to me, but we're all, um, I'm learning. It's all a learning process. This is such a weird idea. Oh, this is the, um, oh, change the songs. This is the uh, uh, Zulu, South African Zulu choir doing When the Saints Go Marching In. Interesting. In case you're wondering. Zulu Nation, unite. Okay. By the, oh, since, I, I don't know, it just came up when I was, Thing about it, I was cooking South since I'm cooking South Africa. Just the other day, this thing came up. Uh, you know how legislatures around the world get to be insane, no matter where you are. Well, their selection was uh, from the other day when people were debating something, and somebody somebody stood up and was referring to the other party as a Teletubby, and says, "I will not stand here and be referred to as a Teletubby, honorable gentlemen. I will not be referred to as a Teletubby." So that was really weird. And sad and funny. It's sad and then funny and then it was funny and then it was sad again. Um, I'm wondering if I can... No, can't keep it in the oven to keep warm because the oven's too hot. Okay, I need to... This, I need to turn this up if it's going to do anything. Uh, the premise here is to let it reduce to a thicker consistency. Um, but I assume that it has to dissolve into the... <coughs> seafood stock first. You know what would be good? Maybe a whisk. What do you think? That might be a good idea. 
I am gonna whisk it. Oh, while I do that, while it does that, I need to do something else with the lobster. I need to get the lobster out of the shells. Is that okay? Is that bad? Uh, I think it's good. Okay, good. I hope it's not getting bad just sitting there, but it's gonna wind up back in here. The pasta, we're talking about the pasta spaghetti that's sitting behind your heads right now. Okay. Like I said, this recipe was so bait, it's so um, light on instruction that uh, a good part of it I'm figuring out sort of on my own. Like stupid basic things like how to make spaghetti. Ooh, I've got a cooking show. Mm. Okay. Okay, let's let you reduce some. Meanwhile, I need to get Larry the lobster out of his shell over here. Hopefully he's cooled down a little bit so I can grab him. And now, I have something I did not have last time I addressed lobster. My shears, which are somewhere in here. You're hiding somewhere. I know you're here somewhere. Uh, oh, there you are. My magic shears, look at this. Are the shears? They come apart. You can stab two people. Or yeah. you can use a screwdriver or a bottle opener. So, uh, pretty cool thing. I never had shears before. So, while that bubbles, uh, okay. let's move over this way and see how I destroy lobster. I do not like cooking lobster because of the hassle of the shells pain in the butt, uh, and last time I cooked lobster was for Comoros when I did a um, <coughs> lobsters in shallots and um, and a vanilla uh, sauce, which was uh, another odd combination. Oddly it worked, but the getting the lobster out of the shell part uh, did not enjoy, and I still don't, because I'm not good at it, and it's awkward, and I don't know how to do it. I don't, I don't, I don't. I assume I get the legs off. Is it like a shrimp? Did I chop, pull it in half? I want to get under here. Okay, so I know my target. Okay. Come on. So we're getting the lobster meat out, is the idea to put it into the pasta with a creamy sauce. Uh, help, yum, thank you, thank you Lola. Hopefully, hopefully it will be yum. Okay. Uh, do you just get a knife and just cleave it through or do you just use the shears and cut your way down? I don't know. I've avoided lobster. I, I mean, I really, I think in the past, 25 years I've had lobster like four times. Because foods that are a hassle. This is like one of the top ones. Mmm, carajo. Sorry, Mom, if you're out there. Mmm. That went somewhere. Uh, you're violating that poor lobster, LOL. Uh, uh, put the flat side down, use the large cushion place. Put flat side down, use the large cushion knife place <laughs> on the upside length. So like this way and like chop through here. That might make sense. Did I put it on my cutting board? I'm going to move. You're going to bubble. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going from here and I'm using my knife, cutting this way. Put the flat side down, use the large kitchen knife, place it on the upside lengthwise. Lengthwise. So, so I'm cutting through here, like this. Well, it's open now. There's that. 
Is it easier? Yikes, flying lobster bits indeed. And use force when chopping down. Thank you. Really, I just, lobster and me are not, not a good match. When I was a kid, we went to Boston. I went to Maine. And my dad went by the side of the road and picked up with his friend lobsters and crabs and just brought them back to the hotel room and they just boiled um, butter in the, in the hotel sink. And, uh, that's supposed to be that way? Um, and, uh, and they just had their own little, like, lobster bake right in the, in the parking lot of the, uh, hotel. And that's when I discovered what a damn hassle seafood was. Help. Uh, Callie, hey there. Thanks for liking the restream. Perfect. Oh, good. Thank you. Hope I'm doing something right. Good thing this is going to wind up getting chopped up anyway. Because this is not, not the prettiest. You can use these shells to make lobster soup stock. Yeah, I could, but I'm not going to. Maine lobster rolls are the best. Um, that's good to know. You know, that's that goes back to the do the states thing. Because I'm thinking of after, you know, after I, I do Puerto Rico, we take a vacation, um, uh, doing the con sort of the conflict states, the states that are not, the nations that are not, like, officially recognized by everybody. Um, so get your Taiwan, your Vatican City, your Palestine, uh, Western Sahara, and such. But after that, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm thinking of starting over again, since you all haven't seen, you know, like, the beginning. And it'll be nice to see me trying lobster anything. Mm. Uh, but it'll be nice to see, uh, you know, how I've improved doing something a second time and... You can finally see that Afghanistan dish I always keep talking about. It's a basic stew, um, but it's so tasty. And I have not made it in forever, because I've been busy making all these other countries. And this one is not coming out of the shell. Ugh. Lobster is such a pain in the butt. This one is not coming out of the shell happily. It's fighting me. I'm sure an implement would be better taking this out, I'm guessing. Good thing I'm chopping this up, honey. Because this is, look at that, that is all up in there. All up in there? All up in there. All up in that business. Okay. Okay, and again, it's a good thing that, because uh, I avoid lobster because of the damn shells. In fact, when I did it for Comoros, I said, I'm not eating lobster again. So, here we go with lobster. Okay, so now that we have the lobster meat, chop it into slightly smaller pieces. It's weird, the picture... Well, it said, the recipe said to take the lobster out of the shell, the picture showed, like, the shell on top of the pasta, so... These recipes online get really weird. Lobster, yummy, yay! Okay. In you go. Lobster pieces. And let's go see how our cream is doing. If you would have done that before it was cooked, it would come out easier. Oh, you mean the... The slicing? Now I know! Thank you! For next time. Okay, that is reducing a little bit. I'll move you in a second. Thank you for your help, everyone, by the way. Hey, Vicky, I see you. How are you guys doing? Holidays uh, kicking into high gear there yet? Haven't been able to look at Snapchat uh, in the last day or so, well, you know. Been trying to stay off social media the last day or so for obvious reasons. Um, that looks thick and creamy. Thick and creamy, maybe not thick enough yet. Uh, let me see what else I need to do. 
Um, mm -mm -mm, did that. Okay, I'm on the last steps, basically. Um, yeah, dinner is gonna be early, FYI. Han? Uh-huh. You heard that, right? I did. Yes, so I'm gonna try to put the bread back in the oven to keep it a little warmer, since the oven is off. Let's cool down a little bit. Hopefully that won't be a bad idea. This seems thick enough. So uh, what are we doing here? We're adding our, I need to take a picture of my nonsense here. Okay. Okay, how about over here? And you go into the drink here. Yes, folks, seafood and cheese. Two great tastes that taste great together. You know, on Top Chef, they did a challenge, a Breaking the Rules challenge, and one of them, someone had to do seafood and cheese, and they were all freaking out, saying, that should not happen, it's wrong. And again, I feel like I'm the only person uh, who watches that. Um, uh, not been on Snapchat much either. Well, yeah. Uh, how is the pasta doing? The pasta is ready. It's sitting right here, and it's about to go into here in one second. The, hun the husband tasted it. Mm. Seemed good. Seemed okay. So now we're adding the parsley, which again, it did not say how much. So again, with the vague recipes. And when I started this, that would have like, you know, sent me into a tailspin. Now it's just a minor annoyance. Um, uh, and three, uh, hi there, hi there. Um, thank you for the like. I love Top Chef. Yay, Lola, I'm glad. Yes, I always feel like I'm the only person here. Um, Cause that's the only, only cooking show that I watch. I'm nothing against the others, but I started watching it before I ever cooked, which is kind of how I got into this whole thing. Okay, so now that we have that in there, we're gonna add in the spaghetti, which has been sitting over here. Wendy Jean, thank you for the restream. I think cheese can work with some pasta dishes. Thank you. Um, good, uh, yes, because like I said, the husband mentioned um, lobster mac and cheese, and I'm thinking, well, this is lobster, and it's, the pasta is mac -y. Okay, hopefully that's not a disaster. And uh, did I take a picture? No. Picture time. Okay, last time I used this pasta was I cooked this dish from Malta, which was so weird. And I, it was like one of my most embarrassing dishes. Not that it was bad, but it was like something that, you know, I would imagine, you know, college students in a dorm making. It was like a spaghetti casserole. Um, and I had it and I just, it made me sad. Food shouldn't make you sad, but it made me sad. So, this is like the simplest thing. No, oh God, why can't I read? No freaking out is a good sign. No, thank you, Kelly. Lavender Femchi, hey there. Thank you for the like and the restream. Good seeing you again. Yes, this is uh, night two of South Africa. Um, and uh, this is again uh, from the western coast of South Africa, according to what I read. It's technically a crayfish and cream cheese pasta. Uh, the crayfish is, um, in this case, Florida lobster tail, um, which is actually crayfish. So, you know, it made the whole loop around. I like watching Worst Cooks in America and Cutthroat Kitchen. Um, you know, when that Worst Cooks in America came out, a uh, friend of mine who, my whole gag was that I don't cook. That's, you know, when I did my Top Chef blog, which is like part of the story of how I got into all this. I didn't cook, and my whole thing with the Top Chef blog was everyone else knew how to cook, and I was just like, well, I don't know, crap. Um, and that's where, you know, I just, you know, tried to make it a humor blog. Um, but a friend of mine who does cook, who did blog, said, oh, we're a chef in America coming out, you should go for that. And I was thinking, well, I mean, considering I don't cook, that's probably, parsley was sold like popcorn now in ancient room. Oh, what do you know? Um, oh, yes, uh, duh. what do I gotta do now? I gotta salt and pepper and taste the damn thing. So, salt. Don't be afraid of salt. And pepper. Homeless, homeless, homeless. 
Diamonds on the soles of your shoes. Peppa, Peppa, Peppa. Okay. But check out that Malta post, because it was just weird. And I've been, I've been obsessed with Malta since 1977. So when I went to make the dish, I was like, oh, I was hoping it would be so much better. But that's when I bought the damn whole wheat pasta. Okay, time to taste. Here we go. Eek. Come back. Come back to the five and dine, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. Okay. Oh, hot damn, that is good. Mmm. Okay, that's like, that's like, wow. Okay, that's so good, I'm gonna rush to eat. That's that's how good that is. Uh, J.M. Nelsius, thank you for the restream. Time to eat! Food time, we are early, early, early. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Ready or not, here we come. Um, thank you for the like, Leslie. Uh, I can use this. Um, hopefully that's not too hot to grab. Okay. Our garlic bread on the side. You see? He's gonna be mad I didn't have time to clean the sink. Are you ready? Okay. This could be like the shortest stream ever, I think. Maybe I'll get views on YouTube. Follow on YouTube. He did? You're still, uh, yes, I'm still meerkatting. Okay. I have, uh, just want you to be ready because it's going to get cold and then it won't be good. And it is super, super good. There's like a hundred kinds of good. Come on, baby. Let go. Let go. Yes, that's good. Yes, he did set the table. He's usually very good about that. Sometimes, you know, he gets busy with stuff. Okay. This is gonna be so good. Oh my God, this tastes so good. And we're putting the uh, lemons on the side. I said a dash of lemon will help, so I'm gonna dress that with little quarters of lemon, which we have over here. Okie dokie. That's it. I cannot forget to take a picture. I always do that. I always forget to take a picture and then I have to take a screenshot and that's not so good. So, um, alrighty. So, that off. Okay, there we go, people, people, people. The short, the shortest stream ever. Um, looks delicious. So the room must be wonderful. Yes, it is. Um, so we have our. Oh, let me get you some shadow here so you can see. Can you see? There you go. I think. Uh, so we have our crayfish and uh, cream cheese pasta uh, with the garlic uh, bread on the side. And it's really simple. And that is night two of South Africa. Uh, tune in for night three on Tuesday. It's going to be really weird and really interesting. Um, you can make the recipe with crab, fish, shrimp, etc. Indeed you could. Um, so tune in Tuesday. It's going to be super cool. It's going to be really weird. Uh, the dish that's there's kind of basically two dishes, and the way that it's presented is uniquely South African. The part of it is not, but that's a surprise. So you're going to check that out on Tuesday uh, evening. Thank you for coming by. Uh, like, follow here on Meerkat. Uh, you can follow on uh, Twitter at Cliffyland. Uh, the blog is at cliffyland.com. You can uh, like the page on Facebook. Uh, follow on Instagram, on Pinterest, or on um, Tumblr. Tumblr is the thing. Uh, and on YouTube, we've got a, a 
is on YouTube now. So you can subscribe uh, to the feed on YouTube and that would be super groovy. Thank you guys. You rock my world. Catch you next time. Till then, bye-bye.